Let's look at another example. This time, let's look at the reaction between copper 2 chloride and zinc to give us zinc chloride and copper. Let's say you react 20 milliliters of 1.5 molar copper 2 chloride with 3 grams of zinc. How many grams of zinc chloride should we get? Now, in a previous video, we introduced the molarity term. Remember, molarity is another way to say moles per liter. So 1.5 molar is 1.5 moles per liter. So as before, we can't really answer this question until we find out which one is the limiting reagent. So again, we'll pick one see how much of the other we actually need. Let's go ahead and start with the 20 milliliters of 1.5 molar copper chloride to see how many grams of zinc we need. Alright, so 20 milliliters is 0.02 liters. I'll go ahead and do the conversion just to save me some pad space that many liters of copper tube chloride. And again, 1.5 moles per liter means that we have 1.5 moles of this compound per one liter of it. Now we need to convert moles of copper tube chloride to moles of zinc. And it's a one to one ratio. And again, we convert moles to grams. Zinc's molar mass is 65.39 grams per mole. So that gives us 1.96 grams of zinc that's required to react with all 20 milliliters of copper 2 chloride. So in this case we see that we actually have more than the amount we calculated. So that means zinc is going to be our excess reagent. We have three, so we, and, but we only need 1.96 grams, so we're going to have a little, a little bit of a gram left over. So if zinc is our excess reagent, that means the copper 2 chloride is our limiting reagent. Because we only have two re reactants. If one is in excess, the other must be limiting. Now we can find how many grams of this product we're going to get. So we'll start with our limiting reagent, like we did before. And since we're given the volume of a, um, a molarity, we use that to convert what's given to moles. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's one mole of zinc chloride for every one mole of copper chloride. And zinc chloride's molar mass is uh, 136.29 grams per mole. which gives us 4.09 grams. So remember, one way to recognize uh, just a simple stoichiometry problem from a limiting reagent problem is that limiting reagent problems are easily identified by having two starting amounts, or given two amounts of reactants. 
again, you can't assume that they're both going to react completely. So before you can find um, how much product you're going to get, you first have to determine which one's the limiting reagent. Finally, let me say that there are actually a couple of different ways that you can do a limiting reagent problem. This is just one of them. Uh, typically, they do involve uh, more than one, or at least two stoichiometry calculations. 